Jones, also known as AJ Stitch on Instagram, and this is my 15th floss tube. Floss tube is a small corner of YouTube where we mostly talk about cross stitch. That's mostly what I have for you today. I do have a book. I probably could have gotten another book out. I doubt I'll get up in the middle of this and go get the other book. So you'll just get one book today. And I also get to finally do my giveaway. It has been a month since my last video. I knew it was going to be tough to get another one in. That's just the way June is for a New York State school teacher. So now that school's over, I finally had a full day to sit around and do almost nothing. I actually took two of those days. One day I read and the other day I stitched. So I have a tiny bit of progress on some projects, but like very little overall, just because June got crazy. It just does that. So I'd like to start by first announcing my giveaway. And then I do have a small giveaway for the end of the video if you feel like sticking around, just because I feel like I want to mail something to somebody and I want it to be a stitchy thing that somebody wants. So if you want that, stick around or fast forward, whatever suits you better. All right, so first, the giveaway. I offered a $25 gift certificate to the Stitchy store of your choice. And the winner of that is Sheila Zan. And she mentioned in her comment that she um, was hoping that she would get to fire poppies soon. So I'm assuming she would like her gift card there. But I will comment on your comment, Sheila, and reach out to you. So congratulations on winning $25 for my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Since I've last seen you guys, I also got a prize in the mail. Like, prize being a loose word, because I didn't actually do anything to win it. I just sponsored a give was sponsored, yeah. Southern Stitchers Co. sponsored a giveaway, and in it they offered me and a subscriber a floss pack of the month. And they do a week's dye works one, and I just, I had to show you guys, because it's really quite beautiful, and if you're interested in a floss club, this is, this is a lovely assortment. And so it comes in a little baggie and it's Weeks Dye Works and it has all the floss names listed. And that's just like lovely little paper in there. And then I had all these, this like lovely spring bouquet. I believe this was, I think it was the May. It was either May or June that she sent me. And so I got Blue Heron and Cherub. I love that cherub color. That's pretty true. And hibiscus. And lilac. And meadow. And river rock. But I do think that all together, they're just lovely. That's like a spring project ready to go right there. So thank you so much Southern Stitchers Co. for sponsoring a giveaway and for sending me one as well. Such a fun treat. So I actually, I think they just shipped out their summer box. So I will have that soon too. I'm excited for that. They changed up how they're doing boxes a little. So we'll see. Okay. Since I saw you guys last, or you saw me, I don't know how to say that. I have a finish. I finished my Shine On Sampler, which comes from the Bonnie and Camille quilt book, which I'm sorry, everybody always asks, is not available just as a cross stitch pattern. It is simply in the quilt book, which it seems pricey, especially if you don't quilt. I get it. But look at this project. It needs a frame badly. I stitched it on 32 count. I believe it's on Round Trip by Fortnite Fibers. And the problem I'm having is that it's not a standard size. It's, it measures like 10 by 11 or something like that, or 11 by 12. Maybe it's 11 by 12. So I have to either have a frame made or fuss with one. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Oh, I still just love it. It's all stitched. This was probably one of the most fun stitching projects I've ever done, and I just loved the simplicity of it. So if you're looking for a nice stitching project that's like that meditative, simple stitching, this is the one. Okay, so that was my big finish, and that was my only finish. I did work a bit, including last night a little bit, on my mini sunflower cottage. I will insert a picture here, probably this way, makes more sense. And I'm almost to 14% done, but it's just coming out beautifully. And you're starting to get some 
so much of that detail. I almost have the first three rows of 10 done. I had set this great goal to like do a row of 10 every month. I'm failing miserably as I am at most of my goals, but that, I just think it's pretty, right? Oh, I love it. And you can see my little sunflower needle minder. And that is from Caffeinated Cat Crafts on Etsy. Just love it. I'll link the shop below. That one's going really well. I did run into a little problem. I've been keeping this project in like one of these shopping totes, probably from Joann's. And when it's in there, I just set it in. It's got like the box of floss, the bottom of the bag is full of floss, and it's just in. But my puffy kitties think that stitching is really fun. And one of them, I'm, I think it was Apollo, reached in and got his little claws into the stitches and put like three pulls in this. So last night I spent some time repairing the pulled stitches. I really think I need to get one of those snag nabbits because it would have been handy last night when trying to figure out how to pull the right thread because the back of this is of course a disaster and I couldn't figure out which thread for some of it. But I still love it. I want to get far. Jo from Belushi Stitches, she's like all the way at the bottom just finishing in the sunflowers and I want to be that far but I haven't put the time in and that's just the way it is. I've also worked, oh I tried so hard to finish this, it just was a fail, on the Hello Pumpkin pattern by Caterpillar Cross Stitch and this, this is a disaster. I, why is it so hard to count? I'm not counting anything higher than mostly what, 15 on this project and I've made a royal mess of it. So I almost have the third part done, but my fox is missing his bottom and my mushroom's not done. And they're both a full two rows off from where they should be. And I don't even know exactly where I made the mistake, but I've decided to just keep making it work for now. I don't know. I thought I was going to get it done because I'm supposed to already be stitching part three this month. So I just have this little bit left in the stem for this leaf. It's close. It's lovely. Look at those great colors. That fox is so cute, but not quite done. So I thought I'd get it done and I didn't, but that's it's coming up on my to-do list. Instead of keeping with that, because I'd worked on it for a couple days in a row, and I just don't have a great attention span. I pulled out on, so yesterday was July 1st. It was like a cool rainy day here. And we'd had a few days that were high 80s or 90s in a row. So that cool rainy day really felt cool and rainy. And so I just let myself not do anything except stitch most of the day. And that helped me get part two of Deck the Halls. And there's a hashtag for this. And there's a hello there's a hello pumpkin hashtag that we're using too. I'll put them both below so you can follow them. Or join in. Please join in because stitching along with friends is great. And so I got dress tree done yesterday, and that was a lot of stitching. This is a shocking amount of stitching. I actually was messaging with Darcy Cameron while I was stitching this, and we had a twinsy moment where we were both stitching the exact same project, drinking the exact same brand of adult beverage while we were doing it. So that's part two. And that's July done. So I'm actually caught up with that sale is the only stitch along that I'm anywhere caught up with right now. Oh, I just realized I'm missing a whole pattern. I am going to have to go get that. We'll see. So then this morning I pulled out my Christmas list and since I last filmed, this is by Silver Creek Samplers on a mystery, like weird woven linen that I had a yard of that I'm just picking away at slowly. Last time I think I had just done a gift for all. I don't know. And since then, I actually since this morning, because this is my second project for Jolly July. I started Christmas morn and I ran out of thread and I went upstairs and I do have one more but this is the very bottom I obviously cut way too big of a piece of linen so that'll get chopped but it's almost done and my goal is to actually finish this today that is a big piece of stitchery 
but I'm really excited to have that done. And breaking apart just a little bit of month by month has really worked well. And I'm not sure which project I'm going to pick next to do that, but I'm sure I'll find another one out of my many Christmas projects that are still in whip form. So those were like the main projects I worked on. I did a couple times pull out my July calendar crates and I just, I wasn't, I'm not making fast progress on this at all. I saw, I was watching, it must be Loving Stitches. She has it all stitched. I was like, how did she do that? But she probably doesn't get quite as easily distracted as I do. And so I've almost got the flag done. This is July calendar crate, sorry, by the Housewives of Cross, the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. That's not right. They stitch them with the Housewives, Priscilla Blaine and Chelsea. And it's lovely, but that's a big pattern. Look at, there's a big house in there and I'm still stuck up in this corner. But it is the 4th of July this weekend. This might be a piece I pull out more. I, don't know, I already have the small done too, but I also have the August one ready to go. And I want to stitch that so that I have a chance of getting these done. And then I started to think, do I just stitch the one, like it's July, do I just stitch August during July? And then I started to overthink it and now I don't know. And I did make progress on one, one WIPCO project, which is from the Year of Celebrations by Hands On Design. And I have been on the August block for some time. This is like a really chintzy linen. I complain about this linen every time. It just moves way too much. It's not a good whip. It's not wo woven tightly enough for me. But you can see May, June, July. This is August. And really all I did on August was put some legs on the ants and put the ants in and then... I filled in the rest of the picnic blanket. It's not very much progress though. And so I think I might have only worked on that for one more hour. It, they're really just, there wasn't a lot of stitching time this month. I'm not sure why. So then, I think the next best project to show is Oh no, no, I have to go get my flea market flowers. I abandoned it in my backpack from school. <laughs> I'll probably edit out that really clumsy moment where I just ran into the table and moved the couch. I did make more progress on flea market flowers. I had originally tried to keep up with the stitch along pace that Fat Quarter Shop had set and whew, there are so many more stitches in this than I realized. So this is flea market flowers designed by Lori Holt printed by It's So Emma, and I'm stitching this on, I think this is So Vain by Fortnite Fibers, and I'm not a whole lot farther than where I was. I had all of this done, and I'm pretty sure I had this started, and this is just as far as I've gotten. But it is lovely to stitch, and my friend Betsy Klieger also started this one, so it's kind of like we have a stitch along together. If you haven't watched Betsy, she stitches lots of beautiful things. Gotta check her out. So now, I had two new starts this past month. A little, like one was a complete impulse start, so I'm gonna save that one for last. And the other one I think just makes sense. So that one is the Fat Quarter Shop Stitch Quarterly. First of all, look at the sprinkle bag. Doesn't that make you just want to go get like a little chocolate vanilla twist cone and throw all the rainbow sprinkles on that you can? Because that's how it makes me feel. And then in it came, they had these sticky adhesive dots that I haven't tried out yet because I haven't finished anything. But they're supposed to help you like, instead of using hot glue, you can use those to mount your cross stitch onto things. So I'm, I'm curious about trying those out. And it came also with, oh, I have the dots. There they are. They're just like little dots. And they look like they're craft colored, but I think you take the craft layer off too, so they're just clear. Those I thought were cool. And then it came with the floss. 
I don't know if you can see me wondering right now, but I've totally lost the needle minder. Oh, I bet it's on my project pillow. <laughs> so these are the colors, all DMC. Very happy, bright summer colors. And the pattern is called Hello Summer. And look at those great popsicles. So happy. So I started stitching that. It also came with a navy blue Ada cloth. And I... I just didn't love the navy, and I typically don't use Ada, so I gave that to my buddy Tracy so that she could try it out, see if she had use for the a navy Ada. And I just pulled out a piece of my um, 32 count black linen that was a yard that I bought, knowing that I wanted to stitch all of the stitching with the housewives things, which I have not done. But I have all that linen, so I pulled a piece of that, and this is my start on Hello Summer. And there's the ice cream needle minder that came with it. I'm pretty happy with that. I know you can see through it in this light, but those are really fun, happy popsicles. And I have to say, I've been doing a really nice job on the back of this one. Look at that. It's so nice and neat. Right? So, hello, Summer. So then, the night that I finished my Shine On sampler, I don't, I know I don't usually have a haul section on my videos because I don't like to look at everything I bought all the time. Um, I, I love seeing what other people buy and you fully enable me, but I definitely don't like to know how much I spend. But a while ago, I had ordered the Tree of Life kit by Barbara Anna from, is it Nitka Moscow? My tube says Nitka. I think that's what it is. And I'm going to try to hide my pattern here because that's all rolled up. And it comes with the floss on this lovely card. And it came with the linen and it came with two needles, which I think they're both probably, they, I just, they're like on this cute little corner with a little felt in the fabric and the felt have both been cut with like pinking shears. I think that's adorable. And so the night I finished Shine On, I was like, oh, I want to start something. So I quickly started the tree of life. This is one thread. That's all I did was one thread. And then I pretended I hadn't even started it. This is a big pattern. But it's beautiful, too. And I, I might have the Christmas one as well upstairs. But I really love it. And let me just, like, kind of snuck it in like I had something to hide cross-stitch problems. So I did stitch that, and I'm just, so far, I have it all in the tube still, which, I don't know, it's gonna be fun. It's my only project I've ever worked on out of a tube for. I wonder if they, like, get a deal on shipping because it's in a tube. Things I don't know. I love ordering things from Russia. I don't know why, it just feels like it's really far away, and then I get that fun package with all the stamps. And it's so great. So that's my new start. Now, I said that I had another giveaway, and I'm going to do that now, and then I'm going to talk about my plans for the rest of the month of July. We'll use the word plans loosely here, because who knows what's going to happen. So on my mini sunflower cottage stitchery, you saw that I had a sunflower needle minder, and I actually had ordered two. And I've decided that I want to give one of them away. And so it's a cute little sunflower from Caffeinated Cat Crafts on Etsy. And I'm willing to mail this to anyone, anywhere in the world. I think it's not very heavy, right? And so I have a cute little envelope ready to put it in. And if you would like your name on this envelope, you just need to add the word sunflower to your comments. And you could like and subscribe too. Those are always very lovely things. I just want to mail something to somebody, so I also hope to film again in about a week. I kind of want this summer to try to make this weekly, because I have more stitching time in the summer, and life is just a little, a little simpler. This next week, I have off from work again, and then the week after that, summer school starts. But I only am working four days a week, and they're not quite full days. So I should still get plenty of stitching time, right? So my thought 
for this whole Jolly July thing. I decided I didn't want to start anything. You know I'll probably secretly start something one day. But my thought for it was to work on a little bit of Christmas every day and kind of set a goal. So yesterday I set the goal of finishing Trim the Tree on Deck the Halts. Done. July 1st. Check. July 2nd. Finishing my Christmas list. And that is actually a lot less stitching than the Deck the Halls. So that should be easily finished. And so I have a quick little list here on my calendar. And these are all of my Christmas whips. And most of them are nowhere near done at all. But I'm just going to stitch on them a little bit each day and see how far I can get into my Christmas list. So my Jolly July goal is to finish as many of my Christmas whips as possible. I don't have any brand new starts planned, which is okay. I would love to finish my July calendar crates or start the August one. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But I have on my list of whips for Christmas, and maybe if I have a picture, I can put those in if I have an old picture of where I'm at. But I still have Marion Minty by With I Needle and Thread, Jack Frost Tree Farm by Little House Needleworks, Happy Christmas by is it Bent Creek? I think so. I have Farmhouse Christmas also by Little House Needleworks. I have Celebrate, Celebrate Christmas, The Tear Tray by Madame Chantilly, Glitter Village by Country Cottage Needleworks, The Winter Wonderland series by Hands on Design, and Quaker Snowflakes by Hello from Liz Matthews. So that's quite a few whips. My whip list has gotten a little unwieldy. So if I could get rid of some of those, like not get rid of them, but you know, get them off the list, I think it'll feel more manageable because my current whip list is it's on two pages and there's very few crossed out. So I need to just pare down a little bit so that when I like start all the things, it doesn't feel quite as overwhelming. I also have really been thinking about working more on my mini sunflower cottage because I found like 20 more full coverage pieces that I really want to stitch. And this is partially due to Candace K. She, I watched her floss tube this weekend and she introduced me to Crafting Creations. And the design, the artist whose work she was doing for Christmas Fairy, which I think was Reuben McHugh. I want to like stitch all the Reuben McHughes. There's Alice in Wonderland ones. There's Santas with like really skinny hats. Love those. There's fairies that look like trees. I want all those things stitched, but they're all full coverage and they're, they're kind of big. So I have to get rid of some whips and not start everything. So I want to work on that. And then, I don't know, but I'm hoping to see you guys again in a week. So not all of that's going to happen. I don't know what will happen, but something great probably will. So in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful 4th of July if you happen to be celebrating that holiday this weekend. If you're not, I hope your 4th day of July is absolutely wonderful as well. And I'll see you guys really soon. Remember, if you would like to enter the giveaway for the Sunflower Needle Minder, just add the word sunflower to the comments. And I will see you all soon. Bye! Okay, so I totally skipped the book part and I've come back for the book part. And that allowed me time to go get the other books. Actually, I got two instead of just the one. So last time I talked about a book, it was about The Lost Apothecary. And this was a book that took me a long time to get through, which could have had more to do with my life than the book. I enjoyed the book. I really loved the parts of the book that flipped back to the 1800s. And I had a harder time with the present day part, but it did flip back and forth. And there were some really cool historical pieces to this book that were worth reading. I would say it like I'd give it like three and a half stars out of five. Like not my favorite book. And I read reviews and people have loved this book. So check it out, but not my favorite. So I do love 
for whatever reason, like murder mysteries, unreliable narrators, things like that. And so one of the books I had gotten, I don't know, anybody else remember the Book of the Month Club? I love getting a book in the mail. Let's go back here. And they send me a free book for my birthday. And then when they choose the book of the year, I get one of those free too. So this was The Survivors by Jane Harper. And one thing that I loved about this book was that it took place on Tasmania, which I don't know enough about the world. And so that helped broaden my point of view a little bit. I also loved that it was a seaside book, especially for the summer. And it was a good murder mystery, four stars. It wasn't too deep. It took me forever to read it. Like during school, I was getting through like one to two pages a night before my eyes would fall down. And then I had that day two days ago where I just read books and I finished the whole book. So I had, I would think I was maybe 80 pages in and then I just read the rest of it in almost one sitting. So it was great for that. Great page turner, not too heavy. Definitely like the survivors. And then I think I watched a floss tube where someone recommended this book. And it was um, the Veronica Speedwell Mystery Series by Deanna Rayborn. And this is the first one, A Curious Beginning. And this, this book is like right up my alley. I love this. It takes place in the 1800s. And the character is a strong female who doesn't necessarily conform to her times or society's ideas of what she should be, which I always enjoy. And just delightful so far. I am that far in. So this is the end of the book. And I just love it. It's easy reading. If anybody's ever read the Amelia Peabody books by Elizabeth Peabody, no, by Elizabeth Peters, she wrote the character Amelia Peabody, I, I think they're very similar characters with slightly different interests where Amelia Peabody was an Egyptologist, archeologist, and the character in this is a very um, well-versed butterfly hunter, but really enjoyable characters. So if you're looking for another murder mystery type book, maybe set in the late 1800s, try her out. Thanks for putting up with my book reviews. See you.